Uh, so first we'll uh, start with an opening statement from coach. Oh boy. Um, well, as I have stated, it's, um, I love Mizzou, you know, my, my four kids and my wife went here in some form or fashion, graduate school or, or undergrad, three of them were born right there on campus. Um, and uh, four of us work on campus. So I, you know, I bleed black and gold and I'm thankful for the opportunity. Um, so I love everything. I'll be a super fan. It was time, you know, I, I ran my race. It was really time, I think for me um, to, to move forward and give somebody else a chance. And, um, you know, I'm excited. There's, you know, I've gotten a, a zillion calls from people from final four coaches to um, national team sitting head coaches, obviously, um, it's a great job. And, um, I know that Jim and, and Tim is tending it up Hickman that they'll have so many people that, that want to come here and coach a team that finished fifth in the sec. And that's a young group. I was looking when we scored the, the goal at Kansas, there were five freshmen on the field. Um, so I'm confident. And, and again, I love Mizzou and I only want what's best. So um, I feel lucky and I still feel grateful. So that'd be my opening statement in some form or fashion. And uh, beyond that, I'll just shut up and listen to you guys and be coachable. All right, I'll start with Eric and then Natalie. Hey, Brian, first off, congrats on, I guess I can call this, is this coaching retirement or is it just stepping down or I just want to classify. Yeah, I, I'm just stepping away from head coaching at this point. Again, I, okay. you know, as anybody in this profession will know that the toll of being in division one um, I've been in division one with men and women at Butler before I came here. And then obviously here over 30 years. And I think the toll, that's why you don't see too many of us hanging around. Um, it's a, you know, it's, it's, it's seven days a week, 24 seven. And I think, you know, it's, it's time for someone else to run it. So I'm definitely out of the head coaching world. You never say never on, on any other thing, but I'm definitely going to spend so much time with my family. I have, a, I have young adult children. My parents are in their, their eighties and I want to be able to spend time that, that um, I haven't been with those. So never say never, but certainly for sure the head coaching game is, is, is on to a younger person. <laughs> and then I guess what my, uh, my, my second question would be, when did kind of just retirement or whatever, you know, stepping away from Mizzou kind of first enter and when did it become serious that, okay, this is the right time to do it? You know, I think overall, I started to think about it maybe three years ago and I felt, you know, the program had taken a turn, not for a great way, which happens in, in programs. I think, you know, the year before this year, before, you know, we were, I think seven and one and we were number 18th. And then we had, the wackiest goalkeeper situation with viral meningitis and appendicitis had to go on campus and get the club goalkeeper. And I'm thankful for, for Jillian. And we didn't win a game at that point. I think we were on our way to the NCAA tournament. I felt like, Hey, I could maybe step out at this point. It's at a good point for someone else. Didn't happen. And I think after that, you know, I thought I have to come back and we have to get it on the right place where we think Mizzou should be. Um, and I thought we did that in the fall. And normally in a 64 team tournament, you finish fifth, um, you're in. And then, um, you know, obviously COVID hit. And then I thought, mm, we need to get it back to where it, I'm going to stick it out for the COVID year. And I felt like the program is where it should be. And it's set up for success moving forward. That's probably my own ego because I didn't want to go out in some of the way that I thought the program wasn't what it was. Um, and, and so I feel really good about where it's at at this point. And so I felt like I owed that to the players, to the program, to the university for, it could have gone the other way. And then I would have had to make another choice and say, hey, you know what, it's really, so that was a thing that made me decide at this point and really family time like I said, with COVID and my parents, it's I need to be able to spend as much time as I can moving forward in that direction also. So it was one, a professional, and really the one that did it was probably the, the personal one with, with my family. 
you know, as the program's only head coach, what would you say you hope the legacy you've left with this program for the next person on both on and off the field? You know, uh, again, I feel feel great that I've always been able to. I mean, my job has always been to prepare humans for when they go to the big bad world, which all of you are in. And you know, we're lucky in that sports is a really healthy way on a lot of that. That at times, even when I'm in a fetal position, when I lose a game, I feel like I'm not supposed to. <laughs> you look at it and you're like, okay, there's so many other things in the world that are you know, we're very lucky on our worst day to do what we do. So I hope that our players are pleased and thank you. People know that, you know, winning is hard, but life is even harder. So when they do come up against something, as all you guys know, that they have some skill set at 22 that they maybe didn't have at 18, that when they don't get that promotion, they go, they don't fall apart. Maybe if they do, it's, it's temporary but they have a skill set to bounce back from what all of us know as life. So that would be my number one um, hope for all the people that leave here. And for me, the, the most exciting thing is when people come back and they are a unconfident, shy, or act like they're confident, but they're insecure like all of us. And they, they come back 10 years later and you see this person I have someone who's a TV personality and this person would was so socially awkward for three years. Her teammates are like, is she mute? You know, so I really enjoy those things when they come back and they are just, they're like a butterfly. And that makes me the most happiest um, me personally. So if we give them a skill set at Mizzou um, that they can use in tough times, I love that. And then my thing is when they do come back, um, and you're like, wow, look at that. Look how they're flourishing in a whole different way. Um, I love that. I'll give you one quick story. We had a kid, a kid originally was looking at Dartmouth and us. This was 20 years ago. And she came here because she wanted the big, at that time, big time athletics. And we were in the big 12. So we put her in the honors college and she wanted to be a doctor. She got her first choice. She went to the University of Chicago for her med school. And I have, we bring back people to speak at our banquet. And I remember, they, well, what do I speak about? Whatever you want, you know, make it real. And she said, when she went to Chicago, she finished number one in, in her class there. Then did this weird fellowship at Stanford that, oh, that 250,000 people applied for. I'll get to the point. But her story was that she was able to do that because when she was, was at Mizzou, she felt every day as a, a student athlete here, and she would be, you can imagine the people that were in the, the medical school at the University of Chicago, and she said they would fall apart because they had no skill set. She goes, I failed here every single day, and that's the only reason I finished number one in my class at med school and was able to get this job or this fellowship at Stanford and do the practice that I'm in now, and Mizzou was for that. So Man, I thought that was the awesome, the best thing ever. So that's what I would say. Uh, ben and Colin. Brian, what uh, what was it about the way this season played out that made made you feel at peace with where the program is and personally? Because you, you said that this has kind of been a three-year process. So what is it about the way things are now that you say, this is good, the time is right? Yeah, I I felt like we were either, I thought we were going to finish fourth, but Georgia knocked us out because of the COVID game, but we finished fifth. And I felt like, okay, Hey, that gets us to a place where, you know, I feel like we honored what we, uh, after uh, one professionally that, Hey, it's at a, a place, Hey, these kids are returning. Um, and I just felt comfortable for sure. Professionally. I thought it was the right piece to, to get, to be able to me personally, that it would attract the right person and um, because proof is in the pudding in some form or fashion. Right. And also that um, me personally, I was at peace with it, that that's what I had hoped. I mean, you can never write the story, you know, you can be, you know, there, I'm sure over the years I could have been let go and that that's just the business part of it. So I felt like, Hey, because of that professionally, I thought no brainer felt at total at peace at that point. Um, and so that that's probably what did it is that I felt like, hey, we the recruits we have coming back in, the kids that we have coming back, 
that it's going to be a very high level job for somebody. And that was my opinion. Not that it wasn't anyway, even if we bombed, it's still, it's a great place to be. I mean, I love it here, but so that would be, and I hope I answered it. So. Hey, Brian, how did you go about informing your players that you were going to be stepping down? And, and do you think any of them had a sense uh, maybe that the, some of the players you recruited were going to be here past the, the end of your tenure? Yeah, I mean, how I, I waited, obviously, because we, we needed to find out if we were in one way or the other. Um, you know, I felt like the schedule was set up. We were in a really good place. I think, obviously, beating Kansas was, was helpful. I think we're still we were a bubble team, but I think what when I spoke to the committee or or people like the Jill and of the <laughs> there's two of them in women's soccer. But, you know, what what we had, we did what we had to do by beating Kansas. But what what hurt us was we we got covid knocked out with Notre Dame in the second game and then the first game at Kansas. And once I found that out the next morning, you know, we had we had already had a meeting because um, I was just going to be up front with hey, this is where we're at. And so once I got that information, you know, I'd been thinking about when to do it. There's, it's scary as, scary as heck to, to, do, to have that. But I, I had that conversation first. Hey, again, you did everything that you could, but with a 48-team tournament and losing those two games, even though we jumped like 14 spots in the RPI, it wasn't enough because we lost those two COVID games. So I had that and I said, hey, the next step is this next month. It's all about your academics because they've been in a 10 month season, which is crazy town. I think the guy, um, the volleyball coach, he, I know him well, but I forgot his name. You got, you know, who he is the, the young guy anyway, a good guy. But um, so it was all about that. And then I just said, Hey, here's the situation. You know, I've been here 26 years. I love Mizzou. And then I just went on to say, it's, you know, it's, I've run my race. It's time for somebody else. You're in a good spot. And then that's when I, I did it. So yesterday at 12, I had that meeting with the players. Um, and having been through that on my own as a college athlete, I was a junior in college and my coach took another job and, you know, there's so many different emotions from each different person. So I just said, Hey, you can feel how you want to feel um, sad, angry, um, anything in between. And then I'll, again, I'll be here until they hire somebody. I'm here to help you. I'll walk you through the process. Um, some of you might want to come see me today. Some might, might take you two weeks. Um, and so that's kind of, kind of how it went. And then I brought in Jim and Sarah and Tim to, to kind of, well, Tim was out with baseball, soccer's his sport, but those two guys, three guys have spoken. They came and just, I just educated them. Here's, what, how you hire a new coach at the University of Missouri. Um, and so they walked, so we're very transparent and, and it's a national search and, and that's kind of how it went. Um, so. You know, Dave and Eric. Hey, Brian, looking back 25, 26 years ago, what, what were the biggest challenges to just launching a program from scratch? And then and what are the challenges you think your successor faces? What, what's to, to take this program, carry on what you built? Yeah, I mean, you know, the, the one thing I was lucky enough to, to start the Division One men's program at Butler and then the Division One women's program. So I would think that played a role for me to get the job. But, but I, you know, at the time, soccer was exploding because of Title IX. I think there were eight teams that year in the Big 12 that started, right? It was like a mad dash. And so, um, so you know, that was the, the start of the program. And then, you know, Grandma Walton came in and, 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 did a track soccer stadium. And that was a big moment for us. Um, you know, and we had real success, you know, we were, we were shocked. We didn't get into the third year, but we got it in the fourth year. And so, you know, the challenges for all the, the teams and I'll just speak about Missouri. I think at that point, you know, obviously we went through a multitude of things. I think by the time we had good timing, we went to, into the SEC at that point, we'd won a tournament and then a natural way to do it. And then that first year in the SEC, we were in the, the semifinal of the SEC. And then going into the SEC was a whole new challenge because I think this isn't bashing the big 12, but when you look at, you know, the SEC as a whole last Olympics, the SEC was fourth <laughs> With, with China and US and Russia and people think it's football it's really 
soccer and gymnastics and baseball. And it's a monster of a conference. And I think, you know, we started to be able to navigate that because of the travel that was, you could drive from Auburn to Alabama, we're the furthest away. And, you know, I think that, that those guys have done a good job committing to um, the travel piece of it <laughs> um, to make us competitive. And I think you've seen that with a lot of sports moving forward. So, um, so I think that, you know, we've done a really great job moving into the SEC with some transition. Um, um, when a state like Alabama doesn't have pro sports, that is, that is a challenge because every dollar goes to one school, you know, here we compete with the chiefs and, uh, on that, you know, even car dealerships or, or advertising jobs, when the Rams were there, they're there. Now the Blues. Now, so I think that economic piece is always going to be a challenge. You don't have that in the state of Mississippi. You don't have that in the state of Alabama and a lot of the SEC situation. So I think that's always going to be a challenge. But I do think, you know, as you know, it's a show me state and there's a lot of pride in, in people for Mizzou. And I think we always do more with less and we always will. And I think that's a great characteristic of who that the state represents. So I don't think it's, it's not something that you can't supersede. That's just the reality when you have population at A&M and their budget and you same thing in Florida and where that's just a fact and that's okay. Um, and I think you see a lot of coaches and a lot of um, programs supersede that in, in a nice way. And so I like to say, Hey, we're not spoiled and we earn what we get. So I love that about us. So the, the next thing I think for the challenge, I think is always, and I think, I think the administration is aware of that is that for soccer, you know, I think to, to make that jump from, hey, you're second, then you're fifth, then you're 12th is the consistent piece. And I think, you know, I think it's always an arms race as far as a facility. Our facility has done well for us. It's a broken back track. It's 120 by 80. And I think that's a, and it's, the surface is second to none. We, but I think that's the next piece. And I think Jim is aware of that. And I think he has that in his mind. So does Jim, Tim and so does Sarah, that that specific piece is one thing that that's used against us in recruiting. And um, with all that said, we still do really kick ass and that, sorry, we still do well. Um, but if, I think that's the piece that, that they're aware of. And, and again, they have things before us. And, you know, I think, as you know, everything goes as football goes. It's just a fact. And they're, I'm their biggest fan. And I think every coach that's smart is their biggest fan. And I think that you've seen what our, our, you know, what's happening, I think, and no, there's no guarantee, but I think that's a big piece of it is no pressure, Eli, but that's the, you know, that he understands that, but, but you understand that's just a natural economic boost and in, in, enrollment and everything on that front. So, I see brighter. I think that's a, that's not the, there's, there's nothing to hold back that person, but I think that can bring you into, to where it's a non-issue moving forward. That's not an easy economic um, decision in COVID times. But again, I think Jim's committed to that. Um, and the administration is committed to that. So I think that's, it's not going to flip a switch, but I think that's something that they also are excited about. No, but again, there's a process. Brian, you kind of mentioned this in one of your previous answers as well, but once your successor takes over, what is it spending time with your parents? You already mentioned, but is, is it now a big honeydew list or what, what's the, what's the daily life can be like, like of coach Blitz after he, you know, I mean, I, I, I don't know anything different for the last 33 years in division one where my phone's on seven days a week and from four in the morning, it is what it is. I, I honestly don't know. Um, I don't know where my skill set. I wish I had a really grand plan. I'm going to just take maybe a, a month to two months to just figure it out and see where that lies um, and see what, talk to people who think, hey, you're, you could be good at this or you suck at this. Um, you know, <laughs> I love Columbia. My, you know, we love all that. There's not, I could stay here if there's an opportunity here. I know that the, the director at the food bank is a buddy of mine. I can see that that being something. I just want to serve in some form or fashion. Um, so honestly, I wish I could just, I don't know what that journey is. It'll be some exploration to, to figure that out. Um, but I do want to, I love Columbia, I love Mizzou, but 
you know, I just want to be able to find a, a path that I can serve humankind to be fair. I don't know what that is. So, so that's just an honest answer. <laughs> ben and then Colin. Brian, when you when you look at how much the game has grown since 1995 in, in Missouri, I mean, you go from no program at Mizzou and now an MLS team in Kansas City, an NWSL team in Kansas City, an MLS team coming to St. Louis, Columbia College beats St. Louis U. Yeah. <laughs> What role do you think or what part do you think your program played in the growth of soccer in the state over the last 25 years? Well, I mean, I think anytime Mizzou opens up within the state and anything that they do, that it's going to impact, um, you know, whether it's, you know, adding a, the, a training program here for, for trainers to come learn and do stuff. I think there's always a role to play there. I think, again, I thought, you know, you, you look at it first, you see that Mizzou went for it and that was a great thing. And then you saw, you know, MLS and um, on Kansas City and then the women's team there. And then you saw there's a MLS team. So I think I mean, I think that Mizzou was ahead of the curve in some form or fashion. You can just look at the numbers that bared out. I think there were 150 other programs that came on after Mizzou. I'm talking about all around the country. So. I think that impacted that. I think you look at the club team system now. I think you look look at the pros. So I think it, I think it for sure um, just opened it up because again, now little kids can go, hey, I want to play there. And um, so I think even economically, I think it affected the state in some form or fashion. Just probably like the SEC and we moved there, it affected everybody and where there was research dollars. So I think it definitely was a, a player in growing the game for sure. I was going to ask a very similar question, Brian, but kind of from from the bottom up rather than the top down. Um, just what, what do you think the the state of high school and club girls soccer in Missouri uh, does for for setting up the, the program here at Mizzou for success? Yeah, I mean, I, I think any time what's happening now is we used to have maybe one kid in the whole state. And now, every you know, it's just like it's like football and basketball. I mean, you know, for us we always feel like if we can get the top kid from St. Louis, Kansas city, and now mid Missouri, mid Missouri was never even a consideration at that point. Um, you know, then we think, okay, Hey, we got at least two or three. And then again, we go to our go-tos, whether it's just warm weather States and all the other places, probably football goes, you go to Texas, you, for us, it's Chicago, Denver. Anyway. So it's, so from that standpoint, it for sure. I mean, there's used to be three kids in the state and now there's probably 15 kids that get poached by the big 10, by the big 12, all over the place. Um, you can look at our national team players at one time. It was, <laughs> I wish it wasn't like that, but you know, we, we were getting started. There was Becky Sauer who's still with the national team. She went to Virginia. Now we've gotten national team kids to look at us and actually come here and pro pro kids were producing a pro kit every single year. And a lot of them are from Missouri. So I think it did a lot for that. And the more the merrier, you know, when we lost Becky Sauer, there probably was no kid even close to her at that point. Now there's three kids that are close to her at that point. And so the reality kids, some kids want to leave, some kids want to stay. And that's up to us to do our job. So I think from that standpoint, um, and you're seeing climate change. It used to be no way, don't do high school. Now, it, then it was development academy you can't do high school now with the back to ecnl kids are playing high school like again i can't tell you the kid that we ha have that's coming from the national team that is a 222 a junior but she can play high school at this point i don't think i could tell you the high school but you could probably figure it out she could have a verbal and that kid is a national team kid and that kid loves mizzou so and right now i'm sure she's trying to get poached and my job is to keep her here for the next person Inherently, she loves Mizzou. She'll know the kind of coaches that are applying for this job, like I said. Um, and I don't see that changing, but there's 15 schools now telling her why she should change her thing. And it used to not be like that. So um, I think I can say all that stuff with the rules because I didn't use a name. And I think that's, but that's just factual. So. Any more questions for coach? Yeah, I do want to thank all of you, and, and I'm sure you will you will follow this next person, and and I it will be a high level person that will, again will just my job is and my staff's job is to get when they step on campus, we have everything lined up 
um, in place. So they just take it to another level and they're running with it. And I'll be the super fan. Like I know we had the, I think the dude here, I forget his name is the super fan. I'm going to crush that guy and I'm going to be a volleyball and soccer, but, but certainly I'm not going to crush him. He's a great guy, but, but, um, uh, so I, I'm sure I'm excited for the new person. I think you'll be excited, whoever that is. And I don't make those decisions. And I've asked not to make that decision. Um, Cause we have 70 people that have come through here that are obviously going to go for it. But, but again, the people that are coming through and, and, and hitting me up, there's some great people in there. And I expect them to hire someone that will definitely be better than anything that I did and, and move it forward. So I'm excited for that, for sure. So thank you guys for covering. And thank you so much. Stay safe, wear your mask, and hopefully COVID goes away. <laughs> thank you, guys. Thank you, everybody. Appreciate it. Thank you.